All right, what is going on, everyone? And welcome back to more Black Desert. Today, we are going over our October's version of our window shopping series. If you don't know what that is, basically where we talk about everything on the central market, all the notable items, whether it's uh, for beginners or end game players. And we look to look at the trends and see if things are worth crafting yourself or enhancing versus just buying. I would say about like 95% of the things are just worth buying in this game um, instead of making it yourself. But uh, as you guys know, some items are event based and like we like to look at trends for end game items such as Debarekas as well. And of course, for everyone else, black stars and everything, just so you guys can get a chance to see is it worth buying, making it yourself and what the prices look like. So with that said, Let's start off with the weapons as usual. The October ones, we'll see what the prices look like. Um, I assume all the weapons are more or less the same brackets of how much they cost, so it doesn't really matter which one we look at. And as usual, for all the new players, I try to answer this every single month. Zarka versus Black Star versus Often. So generally, Zarka is the way to go until you can transition into Black Star. The reason why we don't use often is because if you are PvPing, it doesn't give a lot of accuracy. And the AP bracket that you get, or the like time frame you would use in often versus a Zarka, is a very small window, and being able to upgrade nowadays is pretty easy. Getting what, like 10, 15 billion silver is probably, I don't know easier than it was before so generally you would be upgrading pretty quickly and zarka all the way to black star is generally the way to go for all classes so um let's see a pen zarka is wow it's under 5 billion now the trend is actually going down from month to month so for all of you who are looking to do jatina's quests and you know how that one's the guaranteed pen um we did a video, basically I showed you how to go about doing it, all the materials, how to get all the materials, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to watch that. But I believe the cost to make a weapon is about 6.5 billion silver. So obviously if you could buy it for under 6.5, it's worth buying it instead of doing the Jatinas, and that's the way it is. So for Zarkas, uh, you should probably just buy it. All right, so as we all know, Het Black Stars are probably the golden standard of soft cap. And most people are stuck at Tet, and getting pen is obviously not easy. So let's see, from one month ago when we made our September video, there was around 16 billion. Um, now it's around, obviously, min price at 13. I think the reasoning for that is because we had a lot of events, and I think we still do have some events going on where everyone is just getting free artisans, a lot of mem frags, and everything. So the price of a lot of enhancing is just straight up down in general. Um, but yeah, I think if you're looking to get a Black Star or upgrade to one, now is probably the best time because it is minimum price if you're enhancing for profit. But this ain't it. So yeah, good to know. However, one thing I will say for everyone looking into pen, the price has gone up because of the Kron stone change. And before it was uh, costumes were cheaper and now they upped the price for pearl shop outfits, which I think is a good thing. But they also increased the Kron stones from the blacksmith vendor from two mil to three mil each, which was not a good change. So uh, people who don't spend money on this game are they going to have to spend more, which ultimately affects uh, everyone and it affects the newer to mid tier level players more than the end game players. So that's why all black stars at Penn are going to be up, whereas Tets are going to be down. Um, I have a, another opinion and I had had my own video on is the Kron Stone change good and my thoughts and opinions, how I would change it and everything. So, yeah, you can watch that one as well. I'll leave a link in the description if I remember that one. But yeah, going f up to Pen is going to cost a little bit more. And going to Tet is a good time to buy it. So just keep that in mind when you're 
upgrading. All right, next we have sub weapons. Um, this one's actually a little bit tricky to talk about because there's a lot of different ones like Kudam, Nuver, uh, your accuracy offhand, evasion. For there's a lot of different builds. So what we're gonna be doing is talking about, I guess, the notable ones because by the time you get to the point where you might need accuracy or evasion, you probably don't need this help anymore. So just as a beginner reference, Kudam is for PVE, Nuver is use usually for pvp and black star is the pve version which um you trade a little bit of accuracy for more monster damage assuming this is you know like full pen um capris 20 and stuff so very late game stuff is it worth uh upgrading from kudum assuming you're a pen capris 20 to black star the answer is not really it's like f what a few extra monster damage at the trade-off of some accuracy so I guess it doesn't really matter. It's more or less do you want to have matching weapons or something? And uh, that's about it. So yeah, do you like having matching colors for your black stars? If yes, then it might be worth it. Otherwise, no one can even see it. So whatever. Uh, all right, so let's see. Are these worth making at pen? These are 10 billion silver. So I think if you were doing the Jatina thing, it's probably okay to make it for your offhand, but not the main hand, obviously, because this is kind of expensive. So from last month, they were around 10 bill and 10 point. Okay, so like 10 bill to 10.4 billion. Basically the same thing. So if you're thinking about getting a Kudum, uh... Well, nothing really changed from last month, so now is probably as good as time as ever to get it. Nuver. This one is a little bit interesting to talk about because it's... I know when new players see this, you're like, oh, okay, more AP equals higher damage. Yes, but then when you look at it in terms of like a grinding perspective, um, it, this one gives 62 AP against monsters. Which is basically one to one in AP, except when you're grinding, not against other people. So, Kudum will always be better for PVE and Nuver or PVP. Obviously, there are exceptions at very high end game stuff, but that irrelevant. So, generally, if you're if you're PVPing more. Mo like damage against players and AP is always good, putting you up in a few new brackets. Let's see the prices. Ooh, Nuver has gone up in price since uh, last month. So 7 billion all the way to 8 billion. Is it really a big difference? No, it's 1 billion more, more or less. And uh, I'm pretty sure that if you put a, an order at minimum price, it'll probably fill within a few days. So like, let's put it at minimum price and then it'll, it'll sell. All right, Black Stars. Um, min price. The prices have been all over the place from 15 to like 15, 15.4 to 15. Basically the same thing. Um, I don't think offhands are worth enhancing for profit. If you were trying to enhance a Black Star to tech just to sell it, I'm pretty sure the Awakening weapons are still the way to go. And... 10 black star offhands. Um, I think it is still cheaper to use your Kudum and Capris it to 20. Um, that one's probably roughly around 100 billion silver, whereas a pen black star is like minimumed at 117. So, unless you really want that like four extra monster damage for 20 billion silver more, uh, Kudum C20 is worth it. Eh, more worth it, in my opinion. So, Awakening Weapons. This is probably where the fun begins. Alright, so, if you are a beginner, you're probably at the Dandelion stage. How much are these worth? 6.6 6 billion. I think if you're doing the Jatina first, after looking at those prices, the Kudum is probably the one you want to make over Dandy, because this is barely breaking even in terms of um, is it worth it to Jatina craft it versus saving money so i would go offhand and then just buy the rest of them like the dandelion 
And plus, with seasonals, you already have a Tet anyway, so it's not too bad. And let's see, Black Stars. Yep, even at minimum price, Black Stars are still worth making for profit. Well, when I say making for profit, it's you'll get more. And uh, instead of 13.8, it's 15.2. Whether you make profit off of that by enhancing... Who knows? Most people just lose money when enhancing black stars. I've definitely lost a lot of money enhancing it, thinking I was like, it'll go on average, right? And then it takes me like 30 clicks to get to it. And I'm just like negative 15 billion or something. So that doesn't feel great. Um, Yeah. Black star awakenings are definitely the ones where I still think if in order of black stars, what you should go for to use it for yourself is I would go for the main hand because the main hand gives accuracy, whereas the pen one or like the awakening doesn't give accuracy until pen. So like if you look at Tet, it just gives you stats, but then there's no accuracy. Uh, the way you get it from the dandy version is capricing it up every like four levels or something. And uh, so yeah, the only time you get accuracy is at pen, which makes me believe that the... Uh, main hand should be the way to go, followed by awakening, and then uh, offhand. If you even do offhand, I'd hit or miss. One thing I've always thought about was I would recommend, or I wish that the accuracy was spread out evenly between the main hand and awakening. That way, there's a uh, like, is there actually a reason to go? the awakening version first over main hand but 200 accuracy is just a lot and like we'll talk about that when you get into accessories in terms of value but the way it is and the way it has always been is main hand first and then whatever else all right um when it comes to god eye for all weapons it's really just aesthetics and you like purple versus red if so, go get that. But let's look at Tets. I believe that if you are self-enhancing um, for Pen, if you can get it at minimum price, and maybe on average, you'll probably end up um, hitting this one in less than 20 clicks. So let's see. God Eye is about 1820 Cron Stones from Tet to Pen. Um... And the minimum is like 115. Actually, let's look at this one at Pen. Okay, so from Pen Vedian is 155. Pen God Eye is 115. So if you can buy one, it is definitely worth buying it. The stats are the exact same thing. It's do you like red or do you like purple? That's it. So if people are willing to sell it at minimum price for some reason and just they want to lose 30 billion silver uh get the cheaper one all right let's look at armors now and i will explain the route to fallen god labresca and uh the dawn's glove exactly one time so yeah let's start with the helmets and griffin versus gaia so in my opinion uh, Griffin is slightly better than Gaia because the difference is you get 5 resistances or 5% resistances versus 100 HP pool. And if you do any sort of PvPing, as you guys know, whoever gets the first CC usually wins the fight. So being able to resist that 5% is slightly better than 100 extra HP because everyone does so much damage these days that that 100 HP isn't going to help you. And resisting it all together is probably going to be a lot better. But ultimately, at the end of the day, will you notice a big difference? Probably not. So, uh, I just like Griffins more. It looks nicer than the Gaiath anyway. But whichever one is cheaper, get that one until you can get your Labresca helmet. Alright, so let's talk about this exactly one time. I'll tell you what stacks I used and um, is it worth buying and or making it yourself. So if you were buying it, I would probably recommend buying it at try and then trying to slam it to Tet yourself because the value is like 100 billion. 
So I would treat it like a pen black star in terms of like what stacks I would use. So from base to pry, people will start at 80 stacks and go to like 120. Um, that seems fair enough. 80 to one, 120. And then from pry to duo, you start at 120 and go to like 150. And then from duo to try, you start at like 150 and go to 200. And then from try to tet, you you literally use the highest stack you have. I personally, to get all my tets, I've used 245 stacks. And it just went, I have no regrets on it. Because these are worth more than pen black stars. Therefore, you use the highest stack you have. All right. So let's see. The prices on Griffin. It's actually on the rise. So... I think you can still get it at minimum if you put an order on it because people are probably trying to get rid of it while they like either buy or something. I don't know. Or they're just enhancing for profit. So Griffin's on the rise. This one is kind of the same. All right. Armors. Uh... My thoughts and opinions from Fallen God armor, exactly the same as, well, they're all going to be the same. But the difference between armors is Red Nose versus Dim Tree. You have less Capris required to get to Capris 10 on the Red Nose than the Dim Tree. So in theory, it should be a little bit cheaper. But let's look at the prices on Pen first. So a Pen Red Nose is at maximum right now at 13.7 billion. Is that more or less? Uh, right now, it's it's going up, but if you're looking to buy it now, now is probably a good time. And let's look at Dim Tree. Dim Tree is 10.7. I believe the amount of Capris you need, like a difference between Red Nose and Dim Tree, is probably like a thousand something. So roughly about three billion silver difference, maybe a little bit less if you're on NA, because we probably have some Capris. Yeah, we have 400,000 Capris just sitting there. So, I think that you might want to do some calculations. I don't know off the top of my head, but it looks like it's about even. But I would just go the red nose route if you're doing Jatinas and everything. Just because it is cheaper and it'll save you a little bit on average. And when you're going for Fallen God, same thing from the helmet. That's my stance on it. Gloves and shoes are where it gets different because there's an accuracy and evasion options and then when you upgrade it'll be basically bags to blue uh, evasion to green and this is the upgrade so i personally have blue because i'm a dr green is evasion um let's see pen bags glove at 13 billion pen Libras is at like 10 and so here's the thing as a new player, you're probably looking at this and it's like, oh, okay, so look at the Libra. 62 DP. And then Pen Begs Gloves, you see 60. And then this was more. So a new player is obviously going to look at this and be like, oh, okay, so Begs is 2 less DP and 3 billion more, so I should go Libra. That's not actually how it works. Um, so we actually have two different ones. So the reason why you would go bags is because it gives more accuracy. And when we talk about the accessories, we'll talk about the value in that. And some classes just don't scale well with evasion. So that means DR will and accuracy will allow you to do more than evasion. And so I guess it depends on what class you play. If you need help figuring that out, like if your class is evasion or not. The best way to do that is you look at your like passives, no matter what class you are. And then if your class gives you a lot of extra evasion ac or evasion, um, then your class is generally going to be the evasion. So like ninjas, kunos, there's actually a lot more, but that's just, you know, something you think would <laughs> be evasion. And um, if you're not, then you're DR. So that's the way it works in this game. Um, yes, evasion is better at very end game PvP, but when I say end game, that means you have like 720 year scoring up. So, 
yeah, just be careful on that. I would say if you have to ask, it's one of the general rules. If you have to ask which one you should go for, you're probably in the Beggs Glove route. Um, and then once you upgrade, if you are evasion class and you're wondering, when do I upgrade? Uh, generally when you're over 700 gear score. So, yeah, that's about it. Shoes. Okay, so right now, the shoes, we don't have a uh, upgradable version yet. It's going to be the Ator shoes. I don't know when that's happening. But basically, this is the DR route, and this is evasion, similar to the gloves. Um, one of those, if you have to ask, go Urgons. This is... Uh, the price is on the rise a little bit. Whereas Muskins are also on the rise. But I think overall for PvE grinding, I personally like DR because it feels like you just take less damage instead of dodging it altogether. Whereas if you get chunked or like, let's say you get CC'd in, well, I guess either PvP or PvE, uh, your health is just going to go either from 100 to 0 if you get hit. Or your health is going to go from like 100 to 50 or that's just those are just random numbers. But either way, ever since the beginning, I've been DR. I've had this small phase when I went evasion and I felt a little bit tankier with evasion. But generally for high end stuff, uh, I think most people like DR. Also depends on your class. All right, so let's talk about accessories now and I'm going to go over this. As fast as possible. Ominous rings, accuracy. Tungrad rings, full AP. And entry level is crescent rings to Eye of the Ruins. So, let's see the prices. Prices are out the roof for the accuracy. Because Debereka earrings came out. And which leaves the two last slots to be rings. And so that's why people are going accuracy for this one. Do I think the ominous rings are the best like slot to use for accuracy i'm not sure about that um it all really comes down to how much uh does it cost and how your build order looks like but i've seen people use ominous rings i'm not sure if i think it would be worth it over like a dawn earring or i personally think the lunar um necklace or the turo belt is still better options but if you already have pen debos that's a little bit different so i guess it depends on what stage of the game you're in but generally most people will probably have a crescent eye of the runes or tungrad so are pen tungrads worth it um not at this price it's not so the difference is one extra ap so you get 21 uh ap at pen Whereas if you're going Eye of the Ruins, it's 20 AP. And then you see how the Tungrad Rune for one extra AP was like 40 billion more. If that 40 billion puts you into a new bracket, it might be worth it. But I think an extra 130 HP is very solid. So I personally got my pen Tungrads around like either 80 to 90 billion. So back at that time... The difference between Eye of the Ruins and Tungrad Rings were only like a 10 to 15 billion difference. So I saw a value in one extra AP. Now when there's a 40 billion gap between them, I just don't see it. So it's like you're better off getting an Eye of the Ruins with a 40 billion gap than it is. And of course, Jatina's accessory. I do believe the Pen Crescent Ring is probably the best option for most players. And the reasoning why is you're just saving 60 billion silver. That's a lot, actually. So, and this gives you the most stats. So, like, your Jatina guaranteed one. 20 AP from an accessory is actually really good. So, that's what, the one I would get. Um, prices are kind of out the roof for accessories right now. Wild. Um, going into necklaces. The Lunar Necklace is the accuracy version. Ogre, Tungret, and Layton are the exact same thing in terms of stats. The difference is Tungret gives Black Spirit Rage. Debereka is the full AP version, which is actually what we're going for eventually, soon TM. So the Revive Lunar Necklace is going up in price. I believe now at the stage of Endgame, most people are also going for Debereka Necklaces, which is why... The price is it's going up, but it's not like 200 billion anymore. 
So is it worth it? I think it's very worth it in terms of stat value for AP trade-off. Um, when it comes to Latins and Ogres it and Tungrads, whichever one is the cheapest, or let's see, 80 billion, 76 for a Pen Tungrad necklace, or it's the same thing. If you if you're buying it, just get the Tungrad necklace because it just gives you more like the extra 20%. But just get the one that's the cheapest that you can. And then Debos are one of those endgame items where chances are you're not getting this off the market, at least now or not this year. So it's one of those things you're going to have to make yourself, myself included. So yeah, my best bet to all of you who are self-crafting is buy a Tet and start slamming it and hoping for the best and use the highest stack you can get. Earrings. This is a fun one because there's a lot of options that are actually good. So Deborekas is... Okay, let, uh, let's start over. Pen Distos and Distos in general are the ones that most people are going to be using. This is like the golden standard for all AP builds. Um, price is kind of wild. And... I think the way you would go about transitioning into distos is i think when you are full pen capris like four or up whenever you have around like 340 dp is when you should start looking into distos the reason why is for distos you lose dp so like right now i'd be like negative nine dp so if i took these off suddenly my dp went up right and um Usually, when you're around this stage, you're probably around like 280 AP looking into distos. And you want to grind the 280 spots, obviously. But the 280 spots are kind of tough in terms of like how hard they hit. So if you just get this early on, you're probably going to struggle grinding some spots in terms of like difficulty because it's one of those just don't get hit moments. But if you want to grind safely, I would say 340 is generally the safe spot for the 280 AP zones. And uh, that's when I would definitely recommend looking into upgrading. Otherwise, endgame players, one Debo earring is the way to go. Are you getting it off the market? Chances are you're not, just like any other Debo. Um, Dawn Earring is the accuracy version, which is something I actually might get and trade out one of the Tets for a Pen Dawn at some point. It is very expensive, like the price just like 0 to 100 in one month, so... Well, actually, it's kind of the same thing, but like if I had a chance to buy it at 160 over 170, I would definitely buy it at the cheaper version. <laughs> so, anyway... um. Narc accessory. I actually chose this as my Jatina one because it allows me to get extra DP and try out new grind spots. But I think for like uh, people within like the 240 to 280 AP area, the Crescent will definitely be better for you just because more AP, higher grind spots. But if I'm trying new spots, I want the extra DP, so it might be safer. Um, anything else is kind of irrelevant. If you use an ethereal, which I don't even think DP builds or like the super tanky evasion DP stuff. I don't think they use this in general. Um, but yeah, the things to, I think most people will use are either Narc Earring, Distos, or Debarekas. Uh, Distos being the golden standard. And when you should upgrade is when you feel comfortable, realistically. All right, belts. Debareka, full AP. Turo is the accuracy. Um, Tungrad, Voltara, and Bassi. Bassi and Voltara are the entry levels. Uh, Voltara gives some extra HP on the side, which is nice. And it's going back up in price. Tungrads are one of those things where it's hard to recommend this to people because it gives you one extra AP in Black Spirit Rage. But... At the same time, nowadays getting one extra AP is a lot easier than it was before. So I would just go to survivability route until you can get either a Debo or a Turo. Depends on what you do. And as for the Tay Beck belt, this is one of those memes where I'm just like, 
Is it good on paper? No. But the buff that you get at pen is like, it's a burst window, basically. So is it good? Very specific situations. Um, hard to say, but it's one of those things you build as a meme and it might be good for something in the future. Who knows? So now that we've covered at accessories, armors, and weapons, one other thing I wanted to talk about before we head out is alchemy stones and everything. So as you guys know, alchemy stones are like basically permanently sold out on NA because the difference between everything is you're trying to get a Bell's Heart. I would say most people should get a Bell's Heart eventually from transitioning mid to end game. Um, there's a lot of orders on it. <clears throat> and is it really like when should you get this is whenever three AP is your cheapest upgrade. For endgame players like myself, a Splendid is a lot nicer. And even though it gives a lot less stats, like sheet stats, the ability to actually get higher attack and cast speed by 3% and a little bit of extra AP when actually using it and the accuracy, this is actually the Splendid is a lot better than Bells, but you also have to be very geared to be able to um, make use of the effectiveness of it. So eventually, that's the goal for me. I would love to get a Splendid, but it's also one of those good luck getting it kind of things. Uh, as for beginners, don't be afraid to use these Spirit Stones. Personally, I use I used to use a lot of them before I got a Bell's Heart. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it, to be honest. Like, having this one is better than not using one in general. So if you're a beginner and you don't want to spend billions of silver on like a permanent one, these are fine. Um, the other options is the things they give you from seasons, like those trance tiers and the, uh, what are they called? Uh, these thingies, Th these are pretty good. I would use them. So yeah, with that said, that's about it for October's version. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy this, be sure to drop a quick like on the video. I'd love to see you guys come back. And if you're new, hit that sub button. So I'll leave a link in the description to some other things we talked about in this video. And hopefully they'll help you if you're interested. So yeah, that's about it. I'll see you guys tomorrow for more cool stuff. Peace.